Thank you so much for watching this online video tutorial. Like, comment, and share, as well as subscribe to our channel at Good Better Best Online Videos for more video content. Okay, grade 11, hello, formally. Um, let's just go through the last little bit of um, assets and bases. We've looked at assets and base calculations. We've looked at conjugate asset, conjugate base pairs. We've looked at, I think if I am correct, we looked at um, exam questions on that last session. Um, now we wanna just have a look at titration. Now, um, this is usually taught in grade 12, but uh, we're going to do it now in grade 11. I believe it's part of your syllabus. Okay, so we'll just go through it as an as introduction for grade 12. So by the time grade 12 comes, you already know it. Okay, so for acids at base titrations, okay, if the concentration of an acid or an alkaline is unknown, all right, in other words, we don't know if it is an acid and we don't know if it is an alkali. All right, alkali is also known as a base, right? It can be determined by way of a titration reaction with an alkali or an acid of a known concentration. Okay, now the volumes of acid and the um, and all the alkali is necessary to neutralize each other. Okay, and they'll be used in the calculation. Okay, so what is required is that the volume of one acid or alkali, which is also known as a base, uh, must be known. Okay, because they're going to neutralize each other at an equivalence point. Okay. <clears throat> now, a definition we must understand is a definition called standard solution. Okay, which we'll take down now. Okay. With titration calculation, the standard solution, all right, first of all, it is a solution, of course, of which the exact concentration is known. Let's see if I can put this word in here. Yes, I can. Okay. It's a solution, all right, which the exact concentration is known now i mentioned something else called the equivalence point okay let's take down this definition okay i uh, gotta spell it right first of course okay the equivalence point okay this is obviously a point during a titration Okay, point during a titration where either the acid or the base the acid or the base has reacted completely with either an acid or a base. Okay, let's just get that down. With an acid or a base. All right, fantastic. Okay, then there's another definition which we're not gonna go through right now or, or, or write down because it's quite intuitive to understand. It's called the end point. It's a point uh, during a titration where the indicator changes color. Now we all learned indicators, I think from grade nine and a little bit in grade 10 um, as well. Okay, about if you if a litmus paper changes to red, changes to, um, or if it stays red, it's an acid. If it changes blue, it's a base. Same way with blue litmus paper changes to red, then you know it's an acid. If it stays blue, you know it is an alkali or it is a base. Okay. So the following steps, all right, can be followed to calculate an unknown concentration. So let's write down an equation, or um, or let's just say that it's an equation of an acid plus a base we know gives us of course uh, a salt plus water salt plus h2o let's say it's a balanced equation so the a will be a number and b will be a number as well so it's a balanced equation okay they're the balancing figures okay now the balancing figures are also known as molar amounts all right in the acid and base reaction equation 
and will also indicate the mole ratio in which the acid and base react with each other completely. Okay, so at the equivalence point, which I might, will remind you quickly, the equivalence point is the point during a titration where acids and bases has re either an acid or a base has reacted completely with an acid or a base. Okay, the number of moles of a um, acid used to the number of moles of a base used are in the same proportion. In other words, we'll be using these numbers if they were numbers. Okay, we'll be using those numbers to compare to them. And then we would have a equation saying that, uh, let's use two colors, let's use um, orange for acid, and we'll use blue for base. Okay, so let's go back to the acid. So it's basically the number of moles of an acid is equal to the concentration of the acid times the volume of the acid, okay? Which is the same N equals C times V formula. And then of course, the number of moles of a base is equal to the concentration of the base times the volume of base, right? Everybody should be cool with that, right? <clears throat> um, therefore, all right, me use it a neutral color therefore all right the co concentration of an acid times the volume of an acid all divided by the concentration of a base times the volume well it's a bit too far times the volume of a base should therefore equal the number of moles of acid all right, all divided by the number of moles of a base. All right, and this, ladies and gentlemen, okay, is the titration calculation formula. Okay, that's how you start calculating this. Okay, the amount of moles of each substance that has reacted. Okay, so let's say one mole of an acid reacted with two moles of a base to get a salt plus water, all right? Obviously, we can uh, calculate that by um, actually just putting some numbers to it. So what I'll do is I'll take you, a little, take you through a little bit of example where we can actually use this. Uh, oh, sorry, I made some markings there. All right, we will actually... <clears throat> come up with finding out a concentration of either one of these um, variables. Okay, so um, I'm going to take down an equation and um, let's see if we can, yeah, let's see if we can go, yeah, let's see if we can do this. Okay. All right, what we're going to do is let's take a reaction between oxalic acid All right, and let's react that with um, sodium hydroxide. All right, so let's take this little example. Okay, so the equation will look as follows. Um, we actually write just a better bracket. There we go, COOH2 dot 2H2O plus 2NaOH. That gives us a product of C O O N A two plus four H two O. Okay, cool. Bigger reaction this time. Okay, and let's just maybe give some inf information. Okay, that the volume. Let me just see something quickly. Hmm. So on the side, I've got information here. So take note of this volume here. This volume is the volume of the flask. Okay. So we're trying to react um, oxalic acid plus sodium hydroxide inside a flask. All right. So basically, 
my volume of sodium hydroxide that I have in the 250 uh, cubic centimeter flask or funnel or beaker or whatever that is equal to about 25 cubic centimeters and then 30 um, cubic um, centimeters of acid is then added but you need to take into consideration that the volume of the flask all right is um, or the volumetric flask is 250 cubic centimeters well the first thing we need to do is find out what is the number of moles of the acid all right which is the m is equal to m over big m so we've got the mass there of the of the acid 15,7 grams divided by the molar mass of the acid is um, we've got to add up this entire thing so that's 2 times 12 plus 16 plus 16 that's 32 plus 1 plus let me see that's 18 2 times 18 so that equals to 126 grams per mole this entire thing molar mass so therefore the moles of the acid is 0 comma 1 2 5 mole okay we got that and the concentration of the acid let me just work this one out we've got the volume of the acid to be 30 um, cubic centimeters so that's 0 comma 3 so let's calculate concentration of acid is equal to um, n over v so we've got the number 0 0,125 0 0,125 over uh, 0 0,03 all right I'm just got to picture out something quickly so we actually got to take this amount of moles of acid divided by the volumetric flasks volume so that's 0 comma 25 decimeters cubed and we get an answer of 0 comma 5 mole per decimeter cubed okay saying that basically we're going to add this volume 30 cubic centimeters to the solution that was already there okay fortunately the example i can't exactly put for word for word in this tutorial because it's from a book we're not allowed to exactly use but i can make up my own um, words as we go along so now basically the point that i'm trying to demonstrate is as we got the moles of the acid plus the concentration of the acid we now have ca and va now what we can do is use our titration formula okay because our mole to the base we got basically one here acid and two of the base okay so that's a one there so we basically say well na over n b is equal to c a v a all over c b v b so now we basically got the mole ratios one over two which is a half is equal to the concentration of the acid which is 0 comma 5 multiplied by its concentration which is 0 comma 0 3 and now we're going to divide that by the concentration of a base which we don't know multiply by the volume of the base which we were given but we got to convert into decimeters cubed so that is actually 0 comma 0 2 5 okay now once we got that we can basically say um, multiply the top multiply the bottom so we got basically one or a half is equal to um, we just put this calculation 0 comma 5 times times 0 comma 0 3 that's about 0 comma 0 1 5 all over um, 0 comma 0 2 5 C B okay so if we rearrange this we'll have 0 comma 0 2 5 C B which is equal to 0 comma 0 1 5 times by 2 we get 0 comma 0 3 and we divide both sides by 0 comma 0 2 5 we'll basically get that the concentration of CB therefore is equal to 1 comma 2 mole per decimeter cubed right and that's just basically showing calculation wise okay how to actually use it by plugging it into this formula to kind of find any of the unknowns basically if you get given a bunch of information like this 
and that's all for titration calculations for especially for grade 11 like this is actually more focused on in grade 12 so what we're going to do is we're going to end it off here the content for grade uh, the grade 11 syllabus we uh, think that this is all that's going to be uh, questioned however um, we can look inside grade 12 question papers to find out um, in the next session to find out if we can test our knowledge on what we've learned in this session to see if we can answer any titration calculations or pull up a student's exam paper around this topic and let's see how to, uh, if we can use that as a resource for the next video. Thank you so much for joining me in the uh, content uh, tutorial around acid and base titrations and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.